Rafael, how are you going? I'm go I'm going pretty well. And you, teacher? Good. I'm well. I'm well. You have the view, the the good computer today. Your wife. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know what's going on. She, you know, I actually had the same problem yesterday with this computer. Uh, so I don't know what's going on. It, it's, it's is it a bug or is it some sort of a um, is it our fault? <laughs> so what we did today, we thought let's just use separate computers. But we thought maybe because we're using the same computer and you know our accounts might be con conflicting. So yeah. <laughs> same, she used a different computer and we've used the other one before, you know, and uh, still um, she she couldn't broadcast apparently. I don't know. We she contacted the you know the, the Kalingo staff, the technical staff. Hopefully they'll they'll fix it. But now I'm I'm able to broadcast. So hmm. even I though earlier, that another teachers yeah. have the same problem as you. Uh, um, 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 other teachers have the the problem with the broadcast and uh, join to the to the hangout. Um, oh, I see. So yesterday. it happened before, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With another um, teachers. Yeah, I thought I have seen it before when, when some teachers say, "Oh, I'm I'm unable to broadcast my class," and I think I have seen it before. Mm. And I'm like, mm, "It's never happened to me," and now it's it's happened to me finally. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's strange. It's very strange. I mean, earlier when you know. My wife started her class and she was having trouble. I tried actually on this computer and also I couldn't broadcast. I was just trying trying to do any hangout, you know, on air, a random one, and it didn't let me broadcast. So, but now it works. So it's very strange, very strange. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. How are you? How's everything? How's uh, life in Spain? Yeah, uh, mm, uh, pretty well. Uh, with a lot, but it's too. There are a lot of heat today in Madrid, but um, no, I'm, I'm everything is going well. Even though really, mm -hmm. Still very hot, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, here in the UK, it's uh, becoming, um, you know, the typical I, UK. Yeah. I were I were in the, in the UK last week. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, in the north of in Scotland, in in Aberdeen and Inverness. And oh, you you uh, came finally. Yeah, and also I went to to Wales, but I when I talked with someone there, I couldn't understand any <laughs> word because they <laughs> talk without T, with I could. Yeah, later. Um, first of all, it's difficult to talk with anybody there. Because um, people is so busy, uh, mm. you can engage to to talk with someone um, only the clerk mm. or the taxi driver, no more. But it's difficult to understand them, <laughs> more difficult than in classes. <laughs> I can I can imagine. I mean, you know, so you were you were for for a whole week, right? Yeah, for 15 days for. Uh, for um, I went uh, one week to Wales to St Davies mm -hmm. in the west, and um, very nice coasts and very nice cliffs. And uh, another week I went to Scotland to Aberdeen. Oh, I see. Because I was actually in, in Bolton. You know, Bolton is like close to Liverpool and Manchester. Mm. Mm -hmm. We were there for for almost a week. Mm. So if I knew you were there, I would have maybe. You know, uh, try to meet you somewhere in, in Scotland or you know somewhere near there. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Well, that's all right. I'm I'm glad you had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> did you enjoy the um, the uh, the cloudy weather or the yeah. not so hot weather? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so wet. Uh, in uh, a lot of rain in Wales and in Wales and also in the north. So wet, mm -hmm. uh, always every day yeah. cloudy with rainy, but mm, incredible landscapes. Um, yes, perfect, perfect the views. Scenery, yeah, the scenery yeah. is amazing. The yeah. scenery, yeah. The Loch Ness was amazing, in my oh, opinion. Wow. Perfect. I enjoy a lot. That's good. Your name. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, we have uh, Cecilia and Arthur Kenneth joined us. Welcome, guys. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm fine. How are you? Good. I'm, I'm well, thanks. Cecilia, how are you? 
I'm fine, thank you. You got a different background. Ah, yes, I moved a little in the same room. I'm at the table now. I was sitting right. at the sofa and now I'm sitting at the table <laughs> because I I'm an, as an octopus, uh, institute things with work papers. <laughs> it's oh, terrible. I see, I I'm see. short of time. That's why. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's not, no, that's fine. No problems. I mean, it's nice to see a purple background. <laughs> it's purple, right? I'm not pink. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, this is my living room. Yes, it's purple. Awesome. Okay, and Servet just joined us as well. Welcome back, Servet. How are you going? Yes, hello, everybody. I'm fine. Mm. How about you? Good. I'm, I'm very well. I uh, can't complain. You know, we have our ups and downs, but uh, life goes on. We'll stay strong. Yes. Yes. Look, guys, um, let's, let's get cracking, shall we? Um, Okay, it's sports and hobbies is our topic, all right? Sports and hobbies, and um, we're going to have an interesting article, especially for those who are interested in sports. And uh, our, our grammar focus will be present perfect, and we're going to try to use um, this tense as much as we can in our discussion, okay? I want you guys to be very comfortable in using this tense, and uh, we'll focus on uh, a pronunciation point, uh, which is the V sound. We've covered this before, but I just want us to be uh, very comfortable with saying this, uh, this V sound, and it's, it's quite a, uh, it comes from, oh, we'll get into detail more, uh, I'll, I'll get into more detail shortly. Uh, let's just begin by uh, yeah, asking you a quick question. And um, so have you ever met a professional athlete? Mm. Uh, yes. Yeah. Aka Ken, who did you meet? Somebody we know? A kind of Japanese baseball player in the baseball field, you know, when nice. I you know, went there to watch baseball. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, baseball is quite, um, quite big in Japan, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, but recently soccer is getting more popular, you know. Yeah. Still baseball a bit ahead of soccer, but uh, mm -hmm. soccer is very popular. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there's quite a lot of quite a lot of Japanese footballers playing now in Europe, you know, internationally. And um, but baseball, I see you've met a famous baseball player. That's cool. So you were at the stadium. Yes, uh, I. The match? Yeah. Yes, uh, sometimes I wa I go to the stadium to watch baseball game. And awesome. Yeah, mm. that'll be an experience. I haven't been to a to a baseball match yet. I've been to a football. Or soccer match, but um, not to baseball. Um, okay, anyone else has has anyone else met a professional athlete? I don't know. I haven't met anybody in person, but I've seen. I once seen one person who was running on the seaside. I it see. was winter. I remember. It was winter, it was pretty cold, I had my coat on, my beret on, and I was freezing, and this person he was ran running. like maybe 10 kilometers, I've seen it with, he was running like from one side to another side very long, and he had nothing mm -hmm. on it, just one short, and one, something like tanked up, you know, he was wow. running. So in the cold, probably he was professional because... He, he was yeah, he must have been some... Uh, or maybe some fitness <laughs> fitness uh, freak, <laughs> you know. You don't usually find people running in you know such cold, um, you know, climates or times with a, with a tank top or singlet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, okay, possibly might have been a professional athlete. Um, Rafael or Cecilia, have you ever met anyone? Or do you know somebody who has met? I met two people. Really? I met wow. yes. I met a a friend. Let me guess, Luis my... Suarez. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I met Muslera when he was uh, still a, a teenager, and 
he was already a goalkeeper yep. and uh, I met a, a, a friend of my parents who was a cyclist. Oh nice. And they're all uh, Uruguayans? They're all from Uruguay, yeah? Yes, bo both. Both. Muslera mm -hmm. and, Toma and Tomas is uh, both are Uruguayans. Mm. Awesome, yeah, awesome. Muslera is playing in Turkey in my favorite team. He's awesome. He's a very good goalkeeper. In Galatasaray, huh? Yes. You know, tonight uh, Arsenal, my favorite team, are playing against Fenerbahce. Oh, I forgot talking to yeah. you, Arsenal. Have you watched our Have you watched our match? We beat you and took every cup. Have you watched watched this match? When, when was this? When in the summer, maybe like one month ago. Maybe oh, then. just in the pre pre season, yeah. Yes. It was a friendly match against Galatasaray. I don't know. I forgot. Maybe I didn't follow. You beat Arsenal, you really? Follow or you want to forget it because you... Yeah, yeah, I probably wanted to forget because... <laughs> yeah, Arsenal are having a very bad start of the season. Um, they haven't signed any new contracts and they have lost their first match at home. So the fans are getting really, really uh, fed up with uh, you know the director's board you know because they haven't signed. They were supposed to buy... The, the famous uh, Luis Suarez, you know, from Liverpool, yeah. the famous Uruguayan, but, and he even wants to come, he wants to leave Liverpool, but they're not letting him go. Uh, so anyways, they're not really signing anyone, yeah, it's really sad. So, um, but anyways, hopefully they'll win the, the first leg of the Champions League, which is today, against Fenerbahce. Yes. Uh, yeah. I support yeah. you when you play. Yeah, you, you hate, because you don't like... Our rival. <laughs> our enemy is enemy is our friend. I see, I see. And uh, Tachetin just joined us. Welcome. Are you a Fenerbahce fan or are you Galatasaray? Yeah, actually, hello. Uh, yeah. I'm not a fan, but uh, I support Galatasaray. Yeah, Galatasaray. Yes. Yeah. I actually, out of all the Turkish clubs, I, I, I support them as well. And I supported them when I was young, even. Um, yeah, because I had a few Turkish friends, so. They're very strong now. Yeah, anyways, back to our topic. So have you, have you met anyone uh, that's a, a professional athlete? Uh, touch it, Tim, or I think Rafael? No, no, exactly. I don't met anyone famous. Are you talking about this? <clears throat> uh, in soccer, I've uh, I've seen um, the people who play in the Real Madrid, and also some yeah. people from the Barcelona. But um, soccer is not my favorite <clears throat> game to see. Um, oh, I, I don't know. I don't met. I didn't met anyone famous in this field. You didn't meet anyone famous. Okay, it's fine. Um, yeah, um, touch it in. Did you meet anyone famous uh, from the sports? Uh, no, uh, actually, I have uh, met uh, someone, but uh, uh, he's not uh, popular at at least. Okay. Uh, but I don't. Uh, I didn't meet uh, meet, uh, meet uh, football player, a popular football player. I see. You have met anyone? Okay. Mm. Right. Well, me, myself, I actually, I've, I haven't really met, like you say, that's hugely famous. Um, but I have met a few, uh, when I was young especially, um, I mean, what, my late teens, my 18, 19, 20, because I played football myself, and I actually played for a club, and a lot of those players are still playing now, professionally, internationally. So I've met quite a few, actually. Uh, I mean, none of them are the caliber of Ronaldo or Messi, but you know, they're playing for the for the Bosnian national team, or they used to play for the Bosnian national team, and um, it is a business call. So yeah, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So I I have met a few, but 
not very famous profession athletes. Okay, that's cool. So let me get into pronunciation now. I see a lot of you have already uh, made use of the correct tense, right? You've used, um, you know, the present perfect, and you've actually used this sound, which I'm expecting us to be pronouncing or, you know, hearing, uh, which is the V sound, okay? The V sound. Um, it can be very difficult for students, uh, you know, and then sometimes the students, they substitute it with F, the letter F, or B, or even W, uh, but it's an important sound all by itself, and uh, especially important in the present perfect because of the auxiliary verb have. So when we say, uh, I have seen, we say, I've, I've seen, I've seen, yeah? So which comes with apostrophe VE. So, I did this before, I don't know how many of you have been in my, <laughs> uh, in this experiment, or rather silly experiment. Uh, so we're gonna pretend we are squirrels. Who actually, who knows what a squirrel, what sound a squirrel makes? Cecilia knows, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give us the sound. You let you raise your hand. That's it. You volunteered. How? Let's, how does uh, you know a squirrel um, sound? <laughs> yes, that's it. Excellent. Now, what about a rabbit? Or even it's the same. I think rabbit and squirrel are pretty much the same, aren't they? So. <laughs> Now, Last time you asked us a rabbit. Rabbit, yes. So yes. You, don't, you don't have to make that. So uh, okay. I want you guys to practice this now. Practice it all together. I'm going to ask each and one of you to. I want to hear that sound. Okay. So make the v v v v sound. Okay. So servet. <laughs> Excellent. Aka ken. V v v v. Yes, good. Cecilia, you've already done it. Yours was good. But if you want to do it again, go ahead. <laughs> well done, yes. Rafael? Good, good. Touch it in. Excellent. I think it's quite common in Turkish. You know, they have that, the letters very common. You say evet, yeah, or what else can you say? Uh, Give me yes. another word with that with that sound. I guess it, it's not the same sound. We don't. No. Our bottom uh, lip doesn't touch our teeth. Let me say we we say I guess like W a little bit. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's not like we a vet. We don't say a vet. We say a vet. A vet. Ah, it's very subtle. I see. I see. Evet. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, now. Um, yeah, this is pretty much the sound, and I mean you, we can exaggerate it more and say vroom vroom like the, the, the sound a car would make or an engine, right? And uh, but I, I see all of you pretty much know how to say it. You, you know, have no trouble saying it. Uh, now I'll give you a sentence now, um, and with the use of this sound or with this um, you know pronunciation. So for example. You guys have done good today. All right. So now I will actually incorporate it and shorten it. So you guys have done. You guys have done good today. Okay. So you guys have done good today. Can you notice how I contract it? So I don't say you guys have done. I say you guys have done. So what does it almost sound like? You guys have done. I've done. It's like off, oh, isn't it? Oh. You guys have done. Oh. It's like I'm saying off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ideally, uh, it's it's like this. Sorry. Um, I'll spell it for you. Guys have done. Right. You guys have done. This is the correct spelling. All right. 
but you actually, uh, it, it sounds like off, guys off done, you guys have done, you guys have done, of, 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 okay? So this is where the v comes in. So you guys have done well today, you guys have done well today, okay? You guys have done well today. Okay, can you guys say that? Touch it in. You guys have done well today. You guys have done today. Yeah, you guys have done well today. Guys, okay, Rafael? Okay. Yes, 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 go ahead, touch it in one more time. You guys have uh, done today. Yeah, you've done well today. Yeah, you have done. Or you can say you've done. You've done you've well done. today. You've done, yes. You have done well, well today. Excellent. Rafael? The guys mm, done today. But I don't understand, I don't understand the, the meaning, the sentence. Could you write down, please? Yeah, OK. So you guys have done well today. So good job. Uh, yeah. Good you know, job, yeah. Yeah, thank you. You guys have done well, like the students. You know, you guys have done well today. Okay, Rafael, you want to say? You guys done well today. Yeah, you guys have. You guys have done. Guys have done well today. Okay. Okay, Cecilia. You've. You guys have done well today. Good. Anka Ken. You guys have done well today. Good, good. And Servet? You guys have done well today. Well done. That's it. You've done well today. You guys have done well today. Good. So now let's actually focus a bit more on the on the, on the grammar point or grammar focus, which is the oh, we're talking about present perfect, yeah. So I'll screen share this so you can see. You see that? Okay, okay. Right. So we all know what present perfect is, right? Now, I want us to be very, very familiar and try to use it as much as we can, and I want it to be like second nature, right? So hopefully we can use this in our discussions. So when I'm after this uh, explanation and after we go into detail of the grammar and the, the examples, when I'm asking you some discussion questions, okay, I expect all of you to answer perfectly in uh, the present perfect. Because we've done this before, and I don't know how many of you already have been in my class during this particular uh, lesson, uh, but we should start to establish it and have no real difficulty, okay? If you make a small mistake, it's okay, but, uh, you know, let's, let's see how we go. So, uh, and we know that present perfect uh, is used for three different conditions, okay? So, this is the actual structure, okay? So, we have the subject, like are you, he, she, plus has or have, and then the verb, past participle. So, it's very, very straightforward. You can say, the Americans have won the most gold medals, okay? Or, she has cried for one hour. So all we do is we, ha we say, has or have, and then you have the verb following it, which is past participle verb, yeah? And uh, so we talk about an experience you have had in the past. It's always got to do something with the past, right? So, we have lived in Switzerland, have lived, yeah? I have seen Niagara Falls, seen, lived, always going to be past participle, yeah? Um, and then we can also talk about uh, new information or a change, okay? He has, he has bought a house. I think Akka Ken, uh, did we discuss this last time? Or was mm -hmm. it said that? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll go. We'll, we'll see again. So he has bought a house, which means last week he did. He did not own a house. Or John has broken his arm. Okay, yesterday his arm was fine. Right. So. 
Okay, let, let's move on. The third is to talk about something that started in the past, is happening now, and will probably continue to happen in the future. Okay, so she has lived there since Easter. Okay, this is very important. Since. The next sentence. They have worked on the house for two years. Okay, so these two words, since and for, we use them to help us if we want to say that something has happened in the past, started in the past, is happening now, and will probably continue to happen in the future. Can, <coughs> can I ask yeah. a question about yes. this sentence? Sure. Uh, sure. In this, we, sorry, <coughs> I can't see the uh, screen, but uh, we can say that we have been working. Present perfect continues. When mm -hmm. do we use present perfect? Uh, when uh, do we use present perfect continuous? What's okay, the I believe, yeah, we can actually see here at the end. We're gonna. This is the third and the final uh, condition or, or way. So we can say, like apples have been. See here, apples have been growing on the tree for five years, right? So we say this in in present perfect continuous or progressive to stress that the past action is continuing up to the present. For example, I can can I say I have been working for Yes, and then you must yeah, you have to say for I have been working for 2 years. 2 years. Yep. Yes. You I must have, use this I word, have yeah. worked for 2 years. I can say mm -hmm. that I have worked for 2 years. Uh, what is the difference? Okay, yeah. here, you, yeah, you, you might, if you say I have worked for two years, that uh, sort of indicates that you may have stopped. Mm -hmm. I have worked for two years. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily stress, okay, it doesn't stress that, that mm -hmm. you are still continuing. Mm -hmm. It's maybe stopped already, it's not in progress anymore. So if you want to say, if you okay. want to say that, uh, you know, it's continuing, then you should use it in the present perfect progressive or continuous. I got it. I got okay, it. you got it now. Mm -hmm. So this is the main thing. If you if you know you're still working and you want to exp express that you're still working, then you say, I have been working for exactly. two years. Yes, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I cannot pause. Uh, can you just give me one second? Just one second, please. Yeah, I'll be... Okay. And then uh, I can't see the text. Can you share uh, the link if it's possible? Um, sorry, I, I just had to step out outside for a few seconds. I didn't catch what you were saying. Touch it in. Did you say something? Yes, I can't. Uh, I can't see the text. Uh, All right, you can't see Share it. Uh, the link, please, if if it is um, possible. I don't think I'm able to share this thing because it's actually from the Colingo. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I won't be able to share this because it's actually it's like a pop-up. Every time I, I start the class, this pops up. Uh, but what I can do, I think I can copy all the text. And I'll try to mm, Okay, I can see now. Okay, okay. Can you see I it? can see, yes. Look, I'm, I'm just going to paste it in the chat. I hope it doesn't look too messed up. And then you can copy it and paste it in a Word document. Mm -hmm. Okay, there it is. I've just put it there. It's probably looking a bit messed up, but uh, in case something happens and you don't see the screen again. Okay, so that's, that's clarified, yeah? That's your thing? You understand okay, that now? Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. Um... Okay, uh, let's have a look. Okay, so we're here. Yeah? 
Yeah, so since and for. Right. So she has lived there or here since Easter. So we since. Uh, they have worked on the house for two years. Okay. Let's see next. Okay, the third conditional we usually use um, for or since, right? So for is used for periods of time, while since is used for specific points in time. Now, do you guys understand when to use for and when to use since? Do you have trouble at all? No, no, no I don't. Have to. Okay, because I know some of the learners and some of the students they have difficulty with this, and they you know make a mistake instead of saying. Um, I have worked here since two years instead of saying for two years, right? So it's quite common actually. But if you don't have that problem, then that's good. So basically, for we use um, for periods of time, and then why uh, and since is used for a specific point in time. So I'll tell you, for in this example is for two years or for three years or three days, for two hours, yeah. For a period of time, so for two years, that's a period, and then a specific point in time you use since, like since 2011 or since Thursday, since 8 a.m. I have been sick since the morning, you know. I've been uh, I started studying, or oh, since I started studying, since a specific point. So you're giving a specific point in time. Secondly, uh, we can make questions in the present perfect. Right. So all we do is place has or have first. And include the word ever. All right. So, have you ever been in love? Has she ever traveled to another country? Okay. So we start the question with have or has, and we just throw in ever. Yeah. And then there's a subject splitting that. So, have you ever been in love? Have you ever met a professional athlete? Yeah. Like we started off. Has she ever traveled to another country? And so on. And thirdly, you can form the present perfect progressive, like I stressed earlier, uh, you know, to stress the, uh, that the past action is continuing up to the present. So apples have been growing on the tree for five years, and they're still growing. Yeah? The old man has been sleeping too much again. OK. Now, can somebody give me another sentence using uh, this present perfect progressive? Uh, I've been studying English uh, for a long time. Excellent, for a long time. Yes, anyone else? Have, have you ever been in Poland? Yes, that's time? good. That's a good, good question. Yep. Mm. Have you Selvik? Yeah, touch it and go ahead. Have you ever traveled to space? Yeah, have you ever traveled to space? Yeah, good. What about another, uh, you know, present perfect continuous sentence? Okay. I've been cleaning the dust for five minutes. Yes, good, 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 good. I've, I've been. been I've been joining uh, Colingo for uh, ten months. Ten months. Yes. Yes. That's good. Another good one. What about? What about? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's use one of these. All right. So either since or for. So I want you to start, give me a sentence using. Like she has lived here since Easter, so using the word since, which represents a uh, <clears throat> you know specific point in time, or use for for a period of time. So give me another sentence, please. I've joined Colingo since last uh, July. Yes, good, good. I've joined Colingo since last July. I have been living. In Spain, since I was born. Ah, yes, good. But that's now present perfect continuous. Remember, you gave me the, like the one with ing. But try to give me one where it's just 
I have lived mm. instead of I have been living. So how would you say it now? <clears throat> I have been in this house since March of 2012. Yes, that's good. So I've been in this house. Yeah, try to use that. That uh, you know, try to join it. So instead of saying I have been, say I've been. Yeah, I've right. been in this house. I've mm. been in this house since March or whatever, 2012. Mm. Okay. I've been in this house. I've been. Yeah, thank you. Okay, excellent. That's good. Okay, anyone else? Let's get this. Uh, you know, yes. mm, let's get I've a habit been, out of this. I've been uh, teaching public health here since uh, 2004. Mm, excellent. But you've also used uh, the progressive ing. How would you put this sentence now in? You know, I've been this teaching. Ah, uh, because you're saying I have been teaching. Yes. You're saying I and I and G, you know, teaching. How would you say it in uh, in this tense here? I have teached. Uh, have what's teached. the past? I had past. I had teached. Okay, teach is present. Past. Taught. Sorry. Taught. taught. Yeah, yeah. Taught. I'm not. I know that you know it. Yeah. So I have. Or I I've, I have taught. Yes. Uh, Public health issues here since uh, 2004. Excellent. So I've taught public and health issues uh, since 2004. Perfect. That's good. That's good. Okay. What about something that happened just recently? Like one of these. I've, I've been at this table uh, for an hour. Yes, that's, yes good. that's good. I've been at this table for an hour. Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent. So use for instead of since. Recently, I've been studying history of my country. Could be. Nice, that's good, yes. Uh, so, I've just... Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I've just finished reading the Spanish tragedies from uh, Thomas Kidd. Good, good. So you've added just in, into this sentence, which you can do. So I, I've just, I've just finished reading. Excellent. Perfect. What about if we use it in a, in a, uh, let's say, a third person? Like you're talking about somebody else who's not present. Like he, she, or John. Uh, our teachers, uh, our literature teacher, um, has just told us we have to read the first two chapters of Macbeth. Excellent. Yeah, good. Very creative. <laughs> Anyone else? See now, let me let me tell you one uh, other quick thing. When we're saying uh, he has bought, right, a, a house. How else can we say this to make it even more, even shorter? He's bought her. He's. You wouldn't add. He's you wouldn't add anything. He just. He's bought a house. Yes, I can. Can you repeat? Can you repeat? Yeah, he's bought a house. Yeah, he's bought a house. He's bought a house. So all you do is his. But in this case, he's bought a house. doesn't mean he is. It means he has. Okay? Yeah, so he's, he put apostrophe S, means he has bought a house. So he's bought a house. This is also, this is actually the common way of saying it for native. Uh, if I was to say, if we, we you know, say something like that, we just say, he's bought a house. Um, John's broken his arm. John's, John's broken his arm. Yeah? Instead of saying, John she's, has broken his arm. She's been in a hospital uh, yes. since, the, since the accident. Yes, excellent. 
Perfect. She's been in, a ho in the hospital since the accident. Perfect. He's just bought a new house. Yes. Yes. Another good sentence. Yep. Okay, that's very good, guys. You're, you're getting the hang of it now. I'm very happy. So let me, let me uh, start the... If there are no other questions, um, I'll start the, the, the actual article. It's pretty short, and uh, I'll quickly read it. I'll give you the actual link for it, so you can open it in your own window. There it is. <coughs> All right. So the article actually talks about soccer, the world's most exciting sport. Okay. This is the article title. So English soccer, or actually known as football, you know, um, uh, is more exciting than any of the top American team sports. This is according to the research of a team of American scientists. Eli Benane of the Los Alamos National La La Laboratory and his colleagues analyzed the results of over 300,000 games of soccer, baseball, hockey, basketball, and American football played since 1888. They decided that the likelihood of an upset now, do we understand what an upset is? No, in game. Sure. Not in that case. So they decided that the likelihood of an upset in a game was a good measure of its competitiveness and excitement. So what does that mean, upset here? Losing the game. Yeah, usually, yeah, for, example, usually for example, let's say... Let's say um, Man United Man plays United against, against Galatasaray. Galatasaray. Everyone is Everyone expecting is Man United to win, right? Yes. So now so Galatasaray, Galatasaray ends up, ends winning, up winning, and it's also, and playing, it's also in playing in England. So that's like an, so that's upset. Like an upset. It's unexpected. It's unexpected. There are a lot of yeah, icons right, right now. Yeah, so that's like, yeah, an, so upset. That's like an upset. Okay, when when the the underdog or the the team that's least expected to win ends up winning the game, that's called an upset. Oh yeah. Yeah. So let's have a look. So that's what that what these scientists are actually uh, measuring. Uh, this is the the measure that they're using. So an upset is a game in which the underdog or weaker team beats the stronger team. There you go, it explains it for us. So they found English soccer matches produced more upsets, which means it's more entertaining. <clears throat> you know, when you, when you have a, a sport where, you know, you have the, the good teams, they're always winning and never get beaten, uh, it's quite boring, isn't it? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Surprise results. Yeah, like a surprise result. Yes, yes, unexpected. You didn't expect the the weaker team to win, because you see, in the English Premier League, it's co quite common even now. Uh, you mean all these big clubs like Arsenal, uh, Liverpool, Manchester United, Manchester City, you know, and Chelsea. They have a lot of money, <clears throat> so they spend a lot of money, and they have a lot more quality players. And the smaller clubs, they don't have that much money to spend. So when that smaller smaller club or team beats the bigger club, it's an upset. It's like you know a surprise result. So let's carry on. The survey is not a, is not at all bad news for the enthusiasts of American sports. It seems that soccer has become less exciting and more predictable over the past 50 years. This suggests that strong teams are becoming stronger and the chance of an upset is lessening. On average, the underdog wins 45% of the time in soccer, but this figure is sliding. In contrast, the frequency of upsets in baseball is increasing. Baseball has overtaken soccer in the past 10 years to become the more exciting sport. However, the survey did not analyze the worldwide fever produced by soccer's World Cup finals. So they didn't, they didn't uh, incorporate the, the full scale of, uh, you know, the the soccer competitions. But anyways, I believe that football or soccer is still uh, the most exciting sport to watch. 
uh, you know, people have differences. Uh, I don't know, Akuken, in Japan, like you said, it's baseball is very, very popular. It's still probably and, more popular than and soccer. And yeah? soccer, too. Everybody <laughs> feel excited when the World Cup and yes. uh, yeah, broadcasting. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, recently, soccer is very popular in Japan, too. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so <clears throat> are there any questions? Any any vocab maybe you didn't understand? Worldwide fever in the last sentence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, underdog. So not, yeah, underdog is like a, a phrase used for somebody who is not expected to win. Uh, you know, the weak team. The weak team, you know, the, the one who is not as good as the strong team. Okay. Yeah. And worldwide fever is like the worldwide, um, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> and enthusiastic. Sorry? Enthusiastic. Worldwide enthusiastic. Maybe fever means. Uh, enth 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 <laughs> enthusiastic. Yes, yes, or the, okay. yes, enthusiasm. Yeah, so the survey did not analyze the worldwide fever uh, produced by soccer's World Cup finals. Uh, yeah, it's like the, you know when the World Cup happens and uh, everyone goes crazy, they all go nuts about the football. It's all yes. over the place. It's everywhere. It's like a fever, worldwide fever. It's like, you know, oh, it's the big talk. Everyone's talking about it, you know. That's what they're saying. <laughs> okay. All right. So, if there are no other questions, I'll start asking you some questions. And now, who's the best athlete in the world? Now, it can be football, it can be anything. It doesn't have to be football in particular. And try to give me a, an answer with, you know, using, uh, what's it called? <clears throat> Excuse me. The fastest athlete is uh, uh, same Bolt, I think. Ah. Usain Bolt, yes. So you believe he's the best athlete? Yes, I think. Okay. So how would you put this in, in, in present perfect? Uh, same Bolt uh, has uh, been the best athlete. Uh, yes. Yes, and you could also add, especially since ever. he, yeah, especially, yeah, you can say ever, yeah, or you could, you could say uh, has ever been the best at that. You could also say, we're saying Bolt has been the best athlete, especially since he won the gold medal, or his gold medals, mm -hmm. or broken the, the, or the world record. Can yeah. I say, uh, Sam Bolt has uh, been the best athlete uh, who I uh, mm, seen, who I uh, saw. Ah, oh, that I've seen. I've seen, I've seen. Uh, that I've seen, that I have seen, yeah, I've seen. Okay, okay, that's good. Anyone else? We can talk about, you know, athletes from the past who are maybe not alive anymore, or maybe who are old now. Usain Bolt is a very successful one. Yeah. You can say Usain Bolt is very successful. Uh, been... Nadia, Nadia Komanit. Komanit, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Has the yeah. yeah. Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, Nadia Komanich. Komanich? I'm not sure the English. Komanich. Komanich. Komanich, yes. Ah, has been the best athlete. Yeah, has been the best athlete. Mm. Okay, good. Yeah, there are many we can talk about. There's, there's uh, Muhammad Ali, and, you know, the. The, you know the greatest boxer of all time, I believe, and he was a great role model, a great figure uh, to represent. You know what's what. 
his character was amazing. I mean, if you, if you look at what he struggled, so we can talk about him. He's been one of the best athletes, I believe. And uh, so there are many out there. But good, good. I see you using the correct tense, so that's excellent. So let me throw at you another question. Right. Now, okay, what, what's the most exciting sport to play? <clears throat> Now you might say, you know, certain sports because you like watching them. What about playing? What is the most exciting sport to play? Uh, skydiving. Ah. <laughs> skydiving uh, has been the most exciting sport for me. Yes, excellent. Yeah. So we can't say play here. We just say, you know. It, it's been the it's most been exciting the most sport, sport to participate in or to take part in. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, as a team sport, I think uh, soccer. As an individual sport um, or as a sport to take part in, horse riding. Mm. Yeah, there are, there are different horse riding sort of categories, isn't it? Mm. Yes, still, the one the one that they have to pass along different stations. I see. I see. oh yes, yes, that's very it's very challenging, isn't it? You gotta have a really well trained horse. <laughs> yes, the horse and the and the jockey. And the jockey as well, of course. Yeah. And the jockey as well, of course, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, American else? football also can be exciting. You know, when when the, a lot of big men are chasing you and try <laughs> to jump on you, can be exciting. <laughs> bit. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it'll be very exciting to play. But I think after each match or each game, you'll be very bruised and hurt. <laughs> See all that padding and the helmets they're wearing. Uh, you know, it's still they get. Very brutal. I think rugby. If you play rugby, that's very painful. You know, these guys they have all sorts of, you know, bashed up heads and the and the ears are totally smashed. There's no bones left in their ears. You know, you know that. You know, we have bones in our ears. It's one of the smallest bones in our bodies, and uh, so that will be uh, that must must be uh, a very exciting sport to play. But I wouldn't want to play it. Yeah, okay. All right. I think this next question probably refers to the article itself. So, what happened to soccer in the last 50, on the past 50 years? Mm -hmm. I think, according to the article, soccer, mm -hmm. the upbeat is less uh, happening nowadays in soccer. Mm -hmm. Is it right? So, uh, in my analysis, maybe you know the soccer is a worldwide business now. So, top ah. team can gather a lot of talented players all over the world. So that's why this update yes. is have is happening in in the soccer now. Mm. So it's become more predictable, let's say, isn't mm. it? You can mm. say that to summarize it. More predictable and. Um, it's become less entertaining. It's still entertaining, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah. it's become yeah. less. Like this article says right. that it's become, mm -hmm. um, uh, what's it called? Is it predictable? And they use, uh, uh, you know, there are more, <clears throat> uh, sorry, there are less upsets you know, because of this point you just mentioned. These big teams, they're spending a lot of money for big, big players, and it becomes unfair. You know, actually, FIFA. You know the body, the football body, uh, the global football body. They've actually come up with a rule, or some sort of rule, stating that there is a uh, a limit to how much money you can spend mm. on, on on certain players. But they just totally disregarded that. I mean, look at the most recent talk, which is going on with Gareth Bale from Tottenham. He's supposed to be moving to Real Madrid, and they're gonna spend like over a hundred million pounds. Come on, well, what happened to that rule that FIFA came up with? Mm -hmm. You know, they spent 80 million for Ronaldo when he went from Man United to mm -hmm. Real Madrid. 
and now they're going to spend out for this guy over 100. Yeah, so, you know, it's ridiculous. You know, some of these clubs, they become invincible, you know. Anyways, mm. it's a good point. I agree with you. Okay, now, this is more of the actual article again. So, what happened between the two sports of baseball and soccer in the past 10 years? So, try to give me the uh, uh, present perfect. Uh, uh, yeah, according to the article, I think, um, soccer is more, is more unpredictable than the American sport. In the last survey on the last um, study about this um, mm -hmm. Alamos National Laboratory, uh, they analyzed the results of uh, a lot of matches. Um, base uh, foot soccer is more predict more unpredictable than mm -hmm. American mm -hmm. sport. Uh, yes. <coughs> yeah, that's that's pretty pretty true. Yeah, and you would probably you say it, um, it, it has become so it has become yeah soccer has become more predictable, and there are fewer upsets. Okay, that's good. Excellent. Okay, guys, uh, we're running out of time. I have to get into the assessment quickly. But you're, you're doing very well. Uh, all of you, I've, I've pretty much understood you know, how to use uh, present perfect. All right, so let me just quickly ask you one or two questions, and we'll just go through this quickly. So, Servet, if I may yes. begin with you, uh, I'll give you a, a, a verb or any, any word. And you just give me a s sentence in, in present perfect, okay? okay. So, uh, listen. Listen is your word. I have listened to a lot of different kinds of music. That's good. Excellent. Perfect. <clears throat> yeah, that's flawless. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Let's move on quickly to Aka Ken. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I'll ask you a question and you just respond to that in present perfect. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever have you ever seen a football match? Yes, I've seen a se football match, match uh, several football football matches on TV. Uh, mainly on TV <laughs> on the, on TV. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. That's good. Excellent. Okay, well done, uh, Cecilia. Yes. Okay. Okay. Can you give me a question on this particular verb? Uh, you know, using present perfect, and your verb is may. May. Uh, okay. Have you ever made a? Have you ever made um, uh, pancakes? Lovely. Yeah, I think I have. <laughs> pancakes are nice. Um, but good, set, good question, yes? Very simple, straightforward. Have you ever made pancakes? Very nice, thank you. Okay, Rafael? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, also, I'd like you to give me a question. But use this word here, radio. Okay, Rafael. So give me a question in uh, present perfect using the word radio. So Rafael, are you there? Maybe he's mute. Microphone is muted. Oh, he's on here. Or maybe Touchatin can give us. Uh, then, yeah. Go ahead. Have you uh, listened to radio? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how, how do you? What's that one word that we have to put when we're asking a question in present perfect? You know when? Have you uh, listened the uh, sync on the radio? Okay, but you're forgetting one word, one important word. How, you know, what was the question that I asked you at the very beginning? Do you remember? The beginning of the class. 
Have you ever? Ah, so, so how uh, do you put this question? Have you ever uh, listened to uh, music uh, on radio? Yeah, excellent, excellent, very good. Have you ever listened to music on radio, on the radio? Very good. That's good. That's what I was hoping for. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, that's it, guys. I don't know where Rafael is gone. Uh, maybe he's he had to do something quickly. Yeah. Sorry. Are oh, you back? You okay. back? Yeah. I was okay. attending a call. Yeah. No problems. Uh, I'll give you a quick um, a word, and then you just give me a sentence with that. Okay. So. Okay. Your word is enjoy. I have been enjoying watching television uh, for the la s sign since ten o'clock in the morning. Excellent, very good sentence. Yep, I've got no complaints about that one. Very good. Okay, guys, are there any questions? No. No. Excellent. Okay, I've got to go and start the next class. So if you want to take a quick break and join us. I'll be uh, more than happy to see you again. But other than that, you were great. I congratulate you. You, uh, you did very well. You've done very well. Like I love you. So I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.